Okay, you should be hearing me. Could you just give me an audio check real quick on uh, Twitter? Just let me know you can hear me. Everything five by five. Awesome. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> I have a timer set for today because I have an appointment I have to keep. So one o'clock today will be the end of this, if not sooner. So I know sometimes I say that and I tend to go on and on and on. But I kind of like want to talk a little bit about what we've done thus far and what next week will be like Monday and tomorrow Friday's trading I'm going to take those days away from the charts I want to relax and rest and let myself unwind I've been going a lot since the beginning of the year and between all of you and my older students there's been a lot of things that I've been micromanaging on top of everything else so I kind of like want to just chill out and relax so this will be like a really long weekend for me I promise I shouldn't lose my touch, you know, with a few days off like that. But you know, taking a couple months off and then going right into live streams and and you know, that's uh that's a little bit too much to take on without at least being in the market every single day, keep my finger on the pulse, and you all have experienced that with me. So by far and large, I think you know, anyone that's been really paying attention. There's something that I'm providing that at least looks a lot different from everything else, okay? And I think that it's not a stretch to say it's pretty consistent and accurate, and there's a lot of elements that are precision-oriented. Now, if you're new or if you've been following along since last year, it still might be feeling like it's out of your reach. And that's normal. That's absolutely normal. Because you are now just warming up to seeing what these concepts can do. And the various approaches that the market presents, the opportunities to use them. So I try, and hopefully you can appreciate this. I try to present the the commentary in a way that it allows you to find your own model in it. I'm telling you what I'm basing the, the turning points in real time before it happens, what levels should be key, but don't lose sight of everything that's available in your chart. Like if you see something that might be a breaker or optimal trade entry or, or something else, some other PD array, you should not be, Avoiding that because you're really going to be able to learn quicker. Not that I'm trying to rush anyone through it, but you'll learn better to trust your own analysis versus the thing I may or may not be referring to at the time. And I may be referring to it subconsciously looking at the chart, but because I'm doing something on such a small little time frame to provide proof that you can read the tape, it may not make its way into the comment. Whereas on the video, obviously, I'll have more opportunity to present those things. But I, I want to try to teach myself, which is really what I was doing this entire month, is to focus on the things that I, I would want to talk about and leave everything else out, like the ranting and the, and the, you know, the storytelling about experiences. And this is what I did over here. And this is what happened to me. And this is what you should avoid. They will find their way in the live streams. But I'm going to try to do my best to keep the focus on what price is doing right now. So there's going to be times, hopefully, most of the live stream will be quiet. And I'll only be talking about things that are important. So that way it kind of trains your subconscious also to not feel like you got to be busy all the time. Because we're watching price, we're observing price. I'm going to be highlighting specific characteristics that I think are noteworthy for you. They may or may not be catalysts for price runs. And that's not the that's not the point, really, because 
the worst thing you can do is go in, and this is what I mentioned the other day, and pretty much every time I've ever called the market and it moves in my favor. I really don't want you sending me tweets saying thank you and showing me that you made money. I, I, that, I don't want that. That That's pressure on me because I'm concerned that some of you are not going to listen and you're going to try to trade instead of trying to learn how to do this on your own. And eventually I'm going to get it wrong and then you're going to be upset and I'm going to be upset because you didn't listen. So take advantage of the opportunity. I'm not going anywhere, folks. Okay. That we have a whole year in front of us. Just relax. All these things repeat. And I'm teaching you how to navigate, get through this jungle. Sometimes you're going to step in quicksand. I'll be there to pull your attention away from what you're trying to get yourself into. If you would have pushed a button, but you're not going to, right? <laughs> you're not, you're not listening. I know, but you'll learn the lesson. Very, I'm going to get something wrong. And you're like, Oh, let me just go back to what he said and not push the button and focus on learning. But you'll see that there are times when the markets are really easy. They're real easy. Like books you've read before. You just know it, you know, the plot, you know, the, dialogue you know what characters going to say with one another you know everything and if you really love the story the writer the book and i have several books like that more or less stephen king books and i can read them multiple times and i just i love them like the green mile you know that that uh that movie the book is way better but they did a wonderful job with it and you're probably thinking oh here we go but price is just like that when you are looking for things that you are familiar with. My students, my long-term students, and anyone that's ever been really paying any attention to my content, really taking notes and listening to when it is I tell folks not to try to engage price action, it's the days leading up to non-farm payroll. Now, clearly, today I was giving you one more rebuttal to the people that say, I don't know how to trade or these concepts don't work. And if he knew how to trade or if there was an algorithm, it doesn't take the day off on the days before not from payroll. You're right. It doesn't. It doesn't. But it presents more of a cloud in the clarity and price delivery. Meaning, if you watch the recording I posted this morning on Twitter, <clears throat> excuse me, I mentioned that I wanted to see those two areas remain unfilled. Both of them filled in. Immediately, my response was, I, it needs to, in the next three minutes, in the next three one-minute candles, it must deliver the price I'm looking for. Remember, I was talking about, I don't know how far back it was, but there's a time filter I start applying. When I see the market showing me signatures that I may be near an intermediate term, high or low, and it may be retracing deeper against me, I have to prepare for that. So I don't like to be part of a intermediate term retracement unless I'm in a short term trade or one shot, one kill, you know, something that I'm going to hold for a few days. Then I'm not so concerned about that. And my stop loss is so far away from where market price is. It's not a factor for me. But if I'm day trading, I have to have a time filter. And I'm waiting to see, does the market still show me a willingness? Because Three PD arrays being broken, I'm in trouble. That means I'm probably going to get stopped out. It may enter consolidation or I'm in an intermediate term retracement. And that's respective to whether I'm bullish or bearish. If I see three things that would normally support price while I'm watching price go higher, when you see me doing all the annotations and I'm drawing out order blocks and fair value gaps and saying, you know, this is where it should do this and shouldn't do that. If I'm long and I see three of those broke to the downside, that right there is a warning sign for me. It's a warning. So I saw those things occurring in my trade this morning as I was building it up and then waiting for it to pan out and go up to my objectives. There was two instances where I wanted to see those two gaps remain open. And they didn't. They closed. And they went back down to an order block. But that order block would have been it. Like once it hit that, it needs to, it needs to show me. That's why I was like, okay, it must deliver. It absolutely has to deliver now, because if it doesn't, 
then I have to get aggressive about taking a lot of the trade off that's on or potentially collapse the trade. Not necessarily roll my stop up. Rolling the stop up is something you want to do once you book profits. Once you take a partial, then you want to start moving your stop. But you want to do so gradually. I'm not in a hurry. I'm, my mindset is not, let me hurry up and protect everything I have in the trade. No, my mindset is, is price still showing me a willingness to follow the narrative I have subscribed to? Because if the markets are in fact algorithmic, then these things should remain true. Now, the human in me, the person that's going to be fallible, because I'm not infallible, I will invariably do something and make a decision that was poorly executed on. I own those, I own those errors. They're mine. It's not that the algorithm did something false or it's been changed or you know something to that effect. It just means that I made the error. I did. So it removes all the argument, and it's because I'm human and you're human too. You're going to miss a move. You're going to mess up. You're going to get stopped out. You're going to not buy enough, not sell enough. They're always going to be in there as part of the, the end result of your, your development and your career as a trader. You're going to have high points where you're like, I was really doing well at this time. And then you're going to have these low points where you just feel like you can't find any traction. That's a normal thing. That is a normal thing. I was listening to uh, Tom Hugard, and he mentioned that uh, he had obviously shown publicly to his followers that uh, you know when he's not trading on his high note, you know, he, he admits that you know it, it can look dismal. And that may sound like, wait a minute, you know, this guy's supposed to be the high stakes trader. You know, he's the guy that's making a lot of money. He very well may be doing that. But it doesn't mean that he and anyone else, and myself included, aren't exempt from having periods of drawdown where it's just you're just in a funk. Like you feel like you're just not you're just not there. And the market may be doing amazing delivery and price. It may be presenting opportunities left and right, but you just can't align yourself with it. And that's, I mean, I may sound very lucid right now, but I'm droopy eyed. I'm tired. I'm, my entire body is fatigued. And if you look at my tweet today, I was mistyping things and I miss, miss, uh, quoted, uh, I wanted to type 4,200 and I put 4,100 and I think I spooked the market because it started dropping. <laughs> that was one of the other things I want to see this year when I start doing live streaming. Because when I was on uh, Merck Internet Relay Chat, um, when I was posting what I believed the S&P was going to do, uh, we would see little spikes as soon as I made that post in the chat room. And to me, I thought it was neat. Like I wanted to see how much of an influence. But uh, most of you, okay, shouldn't be worrying about those types of things. You should be focused on the things I'm, I'm teaching and does the price action support the things I've taught and what I'm focusing on in, in that very session. But there's going to be periods where you just can't find your footing. You can't find your groove. And the best thing you can do as a developing student is as soon as you figure that out is the case right then and there. Remove risk. Even if you're in a trade, just remove it. Close it. But Michael, what happens if I would have held on to the trade? Who cares? Because again, we're going back to that same problem. You're assuming your entire career is encapsulated in that one trade. That's not disciplined. That's not disciplined approach to yourself, reasonable expectations, and you're focusing on money, the right transaction where you're correct versus are you doing the right things to preserve equity and emotional psychological equity where you're not stressing yourself out unnecessarily. And you can do that being in a trade while fatigued and, or you feel you just feel off like you just you don't have the confidence and that's not the same thing as new developing traders forging patience because that's normal you're going to feel that but if you found your model and you're pretty much consistent on finding setups you'll have a little bit of drawdown you don't freak out you come back from it you're not in a rush to get it back and you still find consistency I'm talking to that crowd right now when I'm saying this. If you ever get to that point 
where you get into the market and you have a position on and you just don't feel connected, you will not be able to respond as you should when the warning signs are flashing. You'll be like a deer in headlights and it'll just roll right over top of you. And after you're out, you'll have complete 2020 pers perspective and you'll think, oh, I wish I would have, but it's too late then. Versus you get out, it does move in your favor. It's okay because you removed yourself from that potential because you don't know the outcome. That's the problem when you have something move after the fact. When something happens after it's done, the hyenas will come and laugh and cackle and they'll think they have something. And when the lion stands up and rips their ass apart publicly and sends them packing, they're not around laughing anymore. So you have to control how much the hyenas can have access to. And in the market, they'll take your ass off completely if you're not in control of yourself, if you don't manage the risk. And the only way you can do that is be disciplined. There's nothing wrong. There's no weakness. It doesn't mean you're not a good trader. If you feel and you acknowledge that you're not, you're not dialed in, that means you're not focused. You can't focus. You have things tugging at you. Your attention's elsewhere. You don't feel well. You're just fatigued. You're tired. You just don't feel like you're hitting on all the cylinders that you would normally expect yourself to be doing when you're trading. They're all invitations, as far as I'm concerned, for you to say, you know what? I'm just going to disconnect. I'm going to come back either today or in a few days. I'll take a week off, recuperate, rest. The markets repeat over and over and over again. I've been going daily with you all on Twitter to some degree or another, and it's pretty consistent. Where I'm pointing, the market generally goes there. Some of you would look at that and say, well, that's, that's not good enough. You know, I want to be told when to get in, get out. Well, you need to go somewhere else because I'm not promising you that. I'm promising you I'm going to teach you how to reprice, but you have to submit to a lot of things. And it's not having your weight mentorship here. I'm not running Burger King. so. If you want to have your way of doing it, then go buy a whole bunch of books, a whole, whole bunch of courses, subscribe to everybody on YouTube that runs a course and sells things, and then cherry pick what you think works through trial and error, and then see who does better. Because if you're with somebody that has spent enough time to know what it's likely to do, lost lots of money, learned the lessons from that, how to teach other people how to do it, you want to be under the wing of someone like that. Because they generally will help steer you away from the problem areas that they themselves encountered. It doesn't mean they're going to completely make your development free of all kinds of dangers and perils because you're, you're going to bring that to the table in your own personality. There's character flaws that all of us have. But I think that uh, I'm... I'm not stopping, so let me preface it by saying this. But if I were to stop right now, what I've already demonstrated so far last year and this, this past month and today, yesterday, is enough to communicate that there's something more going on except for buying and selling pressure. And I want to talk a little bit about this because I mentioned it in tweets last night, and I ruffled some feathers from folks that are in the industry and they want to come at me with their alma mater. <laughs> but I'm from, I understand where you're from, okay? But you don't know where I'm from. And where I came from and what I know is a little bit above what you're used to seeing. And I, that's not arrogance, okay? So just permit me for a few moments to talk and understand that what I'm saying is nothing egotistical. It's nothing remotely close to trying to be prideful. It's not. But I gave an analogy that you know, if, if you were a, a card player, okay, and you went around and you, you were playing cards, I'm not saying you go to a casino, okay, but if you went around to where they have private games, if you were a card mechanic, it means you were a card cheat, okay? Uh, you know how to run up a card hand, run a deck, uh, deal seconds, deal bottoms, deal fifths, third seconds. Those are characteristics of someone that is highly proficient in card handling. 
Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what does this got to do with anything? Just listen. 